Hey everyone, this is Snark with Snark's Domain. Today we'll be testing out Upsiren PCM1. It's a phase change material similar to Honeywell's PTM7950, which we'll also be testing. And finally, we'll compare those against Arctic MX4 thermal paste as well as Upsiren UTXG thermal paste. So let's get into it. All right, so when I first set out to test these two phase change materials, I was using an AMD Wraith Prism cooler on my test bench. Uh, it's a good cooler, but uh, I found it kind of difficult to keep taking off and putting back on with those little tension clips. Um, it's just I had to basically take the GPU off each time. And I also found out that I'll be receiving a sample of basically like a liquid metal uh, cooling paste. So... I decided to change my cooler to something that was uh, had an even surface and was nickel plated, just so I'm not affecting the the cooler itself with the application of liquid metal. But I'm going to show you guys the application of MX4 as well as um, PCM1 phase changing material with this AMD Wraith Prism cooler, just so you guys can see how it acts when there's little uh, gaps and channels. So here you can see my application of MX4 paste. Like always, I, I spread it out and then put a little dab in the middle. And that's what it looks like after testing. And that's on the cooler. So you can see the paste would press into those channels and then press out of the ends. Um, and that's, that's fairly typical of how this cooler acts with any paste. Uh, here's a little video of me peeling some of the, uh, the plastic film off of PCM1. Uh, I tried using the little sticker tab, but uh, because my PCM is overlapping the edge and kind of flops around, I found it a little more easy just to use the uh, the tweezers to pull it off. But here's what the application looks like. Um, you know, it's not like it's a perfectly even material and there there's little divots in it and stuff. Uh, you can see I've trapped some air bubbles in there. So this is what like, you know, I'm I'm fairly inexperienced using phase change materials. I'm getting used to it. I'll probably get better over time, but this is where my level of skill currently is. So, um, and it, I'm still getting good results, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And here's me shining a flashlight over it. So you can see there's like a little bit larger of a bubble there. Um, I suppose I could have like punctured that to let the air out. Maybe I'll try that next time. Either way, it's not perfect, but let's see what it can do in a little while. This is what the PCM1 looks like on the cooler. And there's a little chunk missing at the top there. That chunk was still attached to the CPU. So it makes a very even flat film um, where you can see it's it's perfectly filled in all of those valleys and, and flowed out the end just like normal. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with phase change materials, or like at least the ones that we're using for our computers, they change from a solid to a liquid um, around that 45 degrees Celsius. There are other phase change materials that change at different temperatures, but whether it's PCM1 or PTM7950 from Honeywell, both of those start to occur at 45 degrees Celsius. So then I upgraded to a Noctua NHU-12S Chromax Black. It's a single tower, single fan cooler, and it uses a 120 millimeter fan. So maybe in the future, I can actually test out fans as well and see what their performance is like. That would be kind of neat, but that's for another day. So then I redid all my tests and this time had settled on basically mining Monero it uses more watts than Prime95 does, even with small FFT. It gets a lot hotter than that. So I figured that would actually be an ideal test to do. So here's after testing what the MX4 paste looks like. And pretty even layer. And here's my application of PCM1. And so just a little bit of theory on phase change. You know, before it fully melts, you get this picture on the left where 
it's probably hot in the middle, but the corners would still be almost acting like a gasket where it's it would be propping up the cooler. So until it fully melts, you can't get that ultra thin layer. Now that's supposed to happen at 45 Celsius, but if your CPU temperature is 45 Celsius, I'm willing to bet the temperature on top of the IHS is actually less than that. So you need to get your CPU fairly warm. I'm going to try and find a way of accurately testing that. I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off, but basically you need to do a burn in. And so when you do that, you know, obviously monitor your temperatures and don't take it to beyond anything unsafe. Unsafe being I wouldn't take it over 90 degrees Celsius for your CPU temperature. But me personally, I'm okay with going up to 90 if I want to get it to melt properly. That's probably overkill. You probably don't need it to get it that hot. I'm guessing a CPU temperature even around 60 or 70 does just fine. This is what PCM1 looks like after disassembly. So you can see um, those two patches match each other in pattern, including the little what initially look like air bubbles are really just chunks of PCM stuck to the CPU die rather than the cooler itself. And you can see it, it flows out those tiny little channels on the cooler. So that's kind of neat. Basically, the longer it stays warm, the better chance it'll have of, of flowing out and becoming really a super thin layer. And here you can see those uh, matching patterns. All right, and then this would be PTM 7950. I found this way of using two tape tabs on either corner made it fairly easy to kind of like hold above the CPU and apply it down. I still didn't manage to peel it with these tabs. I still use the tweezers. But again, that's a case where I might need to apply it to the cooler going forward and, and try that. And you can see I actually messed up the application of PTM 7950. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but that ended up melting anyways and creating a good contact patch. It, it didn't actually affect it. If you guys run into an issue where you're trying to apply a phase change material and you get like a little chunk that's sitting on top, don't tear it off and think you have to start from scratch. The stuff's kind of expensive. I would definitely throw it on there, do a burn in and then see what your temps are like. And I'm sure you're probably going to get pretty good results. This is what PTM 7950 or PCM1 looks like afterwards and how you scrape it off using that little spatula. So I scrape off most of it that way, and then I clean the surface with isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. For all of these tests, I'm using the same CPU frequency of 4300 megahertz, the V-Core at 1.225 volts, and the CPU cooler fan at 100%. Uh, you guys might notice some slight fluctuations in the fan RPM, but uh, those are just momentary fluctuations. It will gonna go up or down like 5 or 10 rpm within those 10 minute snapshots that i'm taking i then mine monero which is a cpu intensive algorithm even more intensive than running prime 95 with small fft by like uh, 20 watts more i believe so yeah i do that for a couple hours and then i reset the values on hw info and i'll take a 10 minute snapshot and then uh, during that 10 minute snapshot, I'm kind of manually watching the ambient temperature and that's the temperature I write down in the snapshots. So, all right, so let's get into the results here and you can see on HW info on the right hand side here, the CPU package power is averaging over 12 minutes, 147.448 watts. And we ended up with a CPU temperature of 64.1 average over the 12 minutes. And that was with an ambient of 22 degrees Celsius. All right, here's the test results of Upsiren PCM-1. Uh, the ambient temperature was 21.8 degrees Celsius. Again, locked core, 4300 megahertz, uh, same CPU voltage there. Uh, average temperature over the 10 minutes was 61.8 and the Honeywell PTM 7950 we had an ambient temperature of 22.6 degrees Celsius same settings as before average temperature of the CPU was 62.6 degrees Celsius that was over 21 minutes 
and the Upsiren UTXG ambient temperature was 23.4 degrees Celsius and the average CPU temperature was 63.9. So here is a chart with those results. The number that we want to be focusing on is the T delta. That's on the right hand side there. That's how high the CPU temperature got above the ambient temperature. As you can see, both Honeywell PTM 7950 and Upsiren PCM-1 achieve 40 degrees Celsius delta at basically the exact same watts. UTXG from Upsiren has a T delta of 40.5 and Arctic MX4 is 42.1. All right, so just looking at these results, I would conclude personally that PCM1 is as good as PTM7950. The PTM7950 used in these tests was bought directly from moddiy.com and they are one of only a couple legitimate retailers that sell it. So yeah, I think PCM1 is pretty good. Now both of them do require a burn-in and I initially was like, oh yeah, you could use PTM for just about everything, but I'm not sure that's entirely true. You'd get into situations with water cooling where you're probably not getting to a high enough CPU temperature to properly melt the phase change. That being said, I definitely want to test it out. I just don't have a custom closed loop water cooling system. What I do have is an AIO on my main rig. So maybe I can test that out with basically just an AIO, but we'll have to see what I can achieve with that. All right, so currently I am monitoring ambient temperatures using some uh, Amazon standalone like temperature probes and like little readout blocks, but they're not connected to the computer and I've got no effective way of, of logging them in HW Info. So I decided I'm gonna make this upgrade by buying an Aqua Computer Quadro fan controller and it's got four temperature sensor headers. And from what I can tell and what I've read online and I asked a few people, uh, basically, these temperatures will tie in to HW info. I might have to add like a DLL somewhere. So I'll be able to log ambient temperature at the intake and then we can just use results off of that. I don't have to try and take like really accurate 10 minute snapshots and then just hope the temperature magically stays exactly the same because it doesn't always. I'll see it fluctuate a couple decimal points of a degree Celsius. Basically, I just want to make my test results even more accurate to real world conditions. I'm gonna to have to do all this testing again, and that's okay. The better we can make the test rig, the better the results will be. And then, I don't know, hopefully the more informed you guys can be to make decisions when you're looking at repasting or repadding your CPU or your cards. So pretty excited to make the upgrade. I had been considering just buying like a new motherboard but most of the motherboards I found only had like one or two temperature sensor headers and reading on forums, it was hit or miss whether they would actually show up in HW info. And for me, logging that information is the most important part of the upgrade. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you guys found the video entertaining or maybe even insightful. And I will catch you guys on the next one.